right, so we're here for the water game we've all been waiting for for many years. Should be pretty exciting. We might even uh, get to shoot some balls. Uh, we haven't done that in a long time, so should be cool. Might have a cool on an end game task, but no, we get another pick and place game with a hang at the end. I don't know, could be worse, but not one of my favorite games. So how do we make robot for the minimum possible cost to compete in this cheap game? So we have, uh, let's see, we're going to only have maybe four motors, six servos, and then uh, one rev control hub. So the first thing I was thinking of is how do we get the blocks out of the pit? And so it reminded me of the crater in Rover Ruckus and then how Seven Sigma used their drivetrain motors to climb over there because we're looking at a four motor motor budget. So you got to make the most of those motors. And the system worked well enough for them because it got them to worlds. The one change I would make for a four motor drive would be uh, switching to Omni wheels. And I think the, the Vex Omni wheels uh, with the green tread, they're pretty grippy. So it would be cool to climb over the, the barrier with them. For the hang and deployment of the samples, I was thinking a tape measure mechanism. I worked with one of those over the summer on an off-season robot. And this was kind of the cross-section layout because I don't have any pictures or video of that mechanism, but it worked pretty well. So it was a coaxial uh, system where you pivot the channel with the tape measure in it and then have a separate drive shaft where everything pivots around the drive shaft that uh, rolls a feed roller and then the spool for the tape there. So it worked pretty well. The The one uh, big issue with tuning this was getting the feed rollers at the right speed. Another issue was when you look at the forces on the tape measures, if you have two of them back to back, that it's much more stable than if you have two of them facing in the same direction. We only used one tape measure on this robot, so the uh, it would fall over when we tried to hang, which was not great. So I would definitely, if you were to use a tape measure mechanism, uh, double them up. So the other mechanism I'd like to use on this uh, concept is a roller claw intake because you can get away with just using two servos. So pretty convenient in terms of uh, actuator use. So here's a Lego prototype of the whole kind of concept. You can see the roller claw there. Uh, you can pick up the blocks uh, maybe, but the, you know, the thing fell off. Uh, okay. So we're able to pop up and over that just like uh, Seven Sigma's robot. And we're able to grab our little block, which would totally work if that uh, bin area was all full of uh, the, the block. And so then you take it off and you're able to go put your clip on in the human player station. So then you're able to grab it and then rotate it up and transfer it just by kind of dropping it in a little basket attached to your two Fat Max tape measures. Um, and then have a little thing to flip up because I know it takes a lot of force to flip them on, so that would prevent it from immediately popping off. Um, so you clip it on and then flip that down and boom, there you go, you hung one. You could also use it to get them in the basket and just kind of shake it a little something until it falls out. For hanging, maybe that little uh, latch would lock in place and then you could pull yourself up. So for the intake rollers, I would use one to two continuous rotation servos. So that would be either your GoBuilder or your VEX 393. I like the 393s because you can get them for uh, pretty cheap these days if you ask a VEX team that's a switch to V5. For the um, uh, intake claw, so the squeezing part, I would just use any Metal Gear servo. I mean, the Go Build a One Steel Gear ones would be nice, but they're more expensive. You can get some cheaper options. I don't know if the red one's that much cheaper, but on Amazon, you can get some cheaper options. So the next one would be the uh, the intake pivot, so the arm thing. So that would I would just use a, one of the, the old spur gear motors from Andy Mark or something. There's if you find a team less than nine thousand a number, they'll give you one probably. Uh, so for drivetrain, I'd use two rev ultraplanetary kits because I like the adjustability and the fact that you don't have to buy a hub with it and you can just 3D print the bolt pattern into your pulley and boom, you don't have to worry about that as much, lower cost. Uh, for the tape measures, I would also use a 40 to 1 uh, never rest motor because you can get them for cheap and it would definitely hang. Would it be the fastest mechanism in the world? Absolutely not. Um, and then for hook deployment, I would use a Metal Gear mini servo. So not like a micro servo, like the SD90 or whatever, but something a little bit bigger. So the, there's like the 21 gram class for that hook. So that's kind of the motor budget overview for the design concept, trying to use as few as possible. So seems like it could be pretty cool. It would definitely not score very many points, uh, but you know, I just do this for fun.
I'm excited to see what all the teams come up with this year. And good luck and into the deep.